We want to tell you all a very high note, and with that in mind, our final speaker, our capstone speaker, is Dan Meyer. As some of you may have watched his TED presentation, which has been viewed, I believe, according to statistics, by over a million people at this stage. And what strikes me most when I watched the and read about Dan is that he was in the classroom, he saw something that wasn't working, he certainly didn't feel that the dynamic was as it should be and decided that he was going to try to explore that whole thing and moved out of the classroom to give more time to it. And now his concerns are curriculum design and teacher education. And I will say no more because I reckon he's going to say it all himself. So Dan Myron, thank you very much. Many thanks to the executive team for bringing me out here. Uh, Ireland is not my home, as you may have already gathered, but uh, this place feels a bit like home to me. I feel like you all understand me uh, in a way that my friends do not understand me, my, my family does not understand me. You all are the sort of people who uh, live tweet the birth of your child or grandchild. You are uh, people who have a hashtag for your family holiday. Uh, you, you know that it's not on Instagram, it never happened. Like, you're people that understand my own kind of mental sickness called technology. I, I, I love being here I, for that reason, and also because I came here with a, a bag half full of tools and tricks and technology, and in sitting through sessions, you all have, um, have filled that bag to the brim with more technology, more tools, more than I had when I came. And you all have the same experience here, you know what I mean. Uh, but now comes the uncomfortable but necessary task of emptying the bag. Because as enthusiastic as I am about technology, I also feel very tense about technology all the time. Um, my tension in technology has to do with the, the finite resources we have as teachers and the infinite tools at our, our disposal. I mean, it's felt like infinite tools have been presented to me today. We have, instead, we have on the other side here, we have finite resources. What's, what's a finite resource we have? Um, I mean, money, obviously, is, a, is important, but even if we had infinite money, there's still a matter of time, also. We have 180 hours with students, and decisions to spend one hour on this tool, that's a decision to, spend, uh, to not spend an hour on this other tool. That's a finite resource. Also, patience is a finite resource. Um, your patience to learn a new tool, your students' patience, um, as you take them through a new tool, the fifth one in a week. We have all these finite resources, and on the other side of that, we have just an, an infinite number of tools that we could choose from. That, it, that makes me feel really tense inside, and it forces us, we need to make some really judicious decisions about how we spend those finite resources. This is important. I, I want to ask you guys, do you have an education technology manifesto in your head, somewhere? Some guiding principle, some mental compass that tells you, yes, this tool, no, not that tool, not now. Do you have some kind of rationale? Because these tools right here, a lot of these were created in a garage on a case of energy drink and three hours of sleep a night. And these tools, they'll disappear just that quickly. I mean, this, this, is, this graphic is not from that long ago. And these tools have now, uh, they've been shut down. They've changed their pay model. Some were free, now they cost. Or now they had, have advertisements in front of students. So that, like, if, if we don't have a strong education technology manifesto, what do we do now? Like, I just used these tools because they were new. Because it's technology. This is the 21st century, and I just kind of wander in the days and pick the next tool off the shelf, and hopefully that one will stay with me. We need something stronger than that. We've got to start uh, emptying our bag of tools right here. So what I'd like to do, the value I might be able to offer you as we leave here, is to share with you my EdTech manifesto, how I decide what tools to use or not to use. So that EdTech manifesto goes like this. I want tools, and I found several a day. I want tools that help me do one of three things in particular. Here it is. I want tools that help me capture perplexity, tools that help me share perplexity, and tools that help me resolve perplexity. 
Now there's other stuff I use, like email software, attendance software, productivity software. That's all kind of essential, bare bones stuff. But when it comes to the things that I want to buy, invest time in, invest patience in, I want them to do one of these three things. Now, there's this word up here that I don't want to assume that we all have a shared definition of, and that's perplexity. What does that mean, and why am I such a fan of it? Why do I need it so badly? Perplexity. Let me define it uh, by what it's not. Okay? Perplexity is not boredom. Boredom is a situation uh, where students don't know something, and they don't care to know that thing. Right there, boredom. Or, uh, perplexity is also not confusion. Confusion is when a student doesn't know something, the student wants to know that thing, but the student doesn't believe that knowing that thing is within her power. That results in confusion. Perplexity is a situation that's, that's, that's better than gold here. Perplexity is when the student doesn't know something, the student wants to know that thing, and the student believes that knowing that thing is within her power, when all three of those conditions are true, I step back. I, I can almost only mess this up and make a mess of it. Like this learning will happen there with or without me. So I'm looking for tools that help me capture that moment, share it with, with students, and help them resolve it. That's what I need. I'm not talking about engagement here. Engagement is a nice thing that comes out of a perplexing moment. But I've done so many silly things as I pursue engagement they just wind up being more like entertainment for students. Perplexity is the stronger principle for me. Um, what's the difference? I guess engagement. Let's say I told you that the only country in the world that starts with O is Oman. That's like an engaging fact. I mean, a little bit of trivia, true, but it's kind of engaging. Um, but the moment's past now. What if instead I'd asked you, what's the only country in the world that starts with O? Then it's a moment of perplexity, where you're like, wait, there's only one? And you start thinking through all the countries you know in your head. That's the difference, engagement versus perplexity. Uh, or this right here, this is a, a graphic put out by, uh, in, in the States, I'm a, uh, by my, my national math teacher body here. This right here, it's trying to engage students in parabolas. They're all around us. So I put this up on the wall, and I trust that students will want to know about parabolas, that they will be engaged by parabolas because of this poster. It all sounds very hopeful to me. I'm not sure it will work. The difference being, check out this right here. Basketball may not be as popular up here, true, but this, this is a an attempt to perplex the student with parabolas. Like, do you see it's the same shape? It's the same exact shape. It's, uh, it's real world. This is a bridge. This is basketball. But notice how this right here has no question attached to it. I can ask no perplexing question here. This right here, it's hard not to wonder, is the ball going to go in that hoop right there? The student is perplexed. It's parabola to you. Does that difference make sense? Engagement and perplexity. So perplexity. Here's what I'll also offer you. is um, This website, which I'll put up at the end, is going to have a lot of resources on it. This website. Uh, we'll have tutorials for all the tools I'll talk about here. But my goal here in this closing session is, is not a how-to session. I, I personally am exhausted and thrilled by how-to sessions. Like, I, I, like, I'm up to here right now. My mind is full. So this will be instead a, a why-to session, not a how-to session. Like a why should you use these tools. And if your interest is piqued by them, go to this website, and I have, I have a, you know, for each one of these tools, I'll have a, a, a beginner level task for you if you've never tried it, an advanced level task if you have, and then a screencast, a video of my words, my narration over a computer screen explaining both. I'll put that website back up. But here's a few tools that help me capture perplexity. If you know some I've forgotten, I want to hear about it, okay? So, number one tool, have you heard of this one? The internet. Heard of that one? The internet is where perplexity lives more often than not. Internet's a very perplexing place. That's not very helpful, I admit, okay? What is more helpful is, to, is a tool that will help you take that, this enormous, expansive, wild game preserve called the internet and, and be a guide for you through it. And that tool's called an RSS reader. Okay, you've heard, heard it before today a few times, perhaps. 
What this helps me do is instead of loading up 50 web pages across the, across the computer screen every day, checking each one, did that one update? No. That one? No. Close it. That one? Yes. Anything perplexing for my students? No. And keep on moving through great time and expense there. An RSS reader lets me throw all of those websites into one web page, which I go to at the end of the day, and I just move through it so fast, it sends all the updates there to me in advance. So right here, here's my, uh, my RSS feeder, uh, reader. I just press the J key, and I move on through. The J key moves on through. It's so fast, so easy, I can consume more. I'm looking at things, I'm like, oh, that's kind of perplexing to me, maybe a little bit. I'm a little engaged by that. I move on, it's not strong enough for me, I move on. That's maybe engaging to a math teacher, but not a math student. I keep moving, and then all of a sudden, I see it. Perplexity in the wild. This is it right here, guys. For the right kind of student, in the right place, at the right time, this is deeply perplexing. This right here is uh, the graph of water consumption in Edmonton, Canada, on the day of the Olympic gold medal ice hockey game. All clear there? This right here, this is the, the, the blue line. The blue line is the day of the ice hockey game. The green line is the day before the gold medal hockey game. Green line, kind of steady, little variation. Blue line, going crazy. Does anybody know why it's going crazy? What's going on here? Potty break, say more about that. Please. TV watching. Give me a complete sentence. One that will convince everybody here of what's going on here. Go ahead. So the schedule of the TV includes four times for water consumption. Is that right? What's going on with these four right here? Those four peaks? What's happening there? Ad breaks. Sure, ad breaks. There's more than four ad breaks, though. It happens to be that ice hockey game breaks down um, into three periods. Three periods. And there we have one, two, three, and wait a second. Game's over. And then what about these moments here, here, and here? What's going on with those? Where nobody's on the can. Yeah, please. <laughs> yes, sir. What's that? Yeah, so but what would that be in the, in the game? Like, what can you imagine happening in the game that result in, in nobody being in the bathroom right there? They scored a goal. Very exciting. Everyone's into that. Great idea. What else? Scores are very close. Scores are close. This is a gold medal hockey game, of course. So. There's a fight. There's a fight. <laughs> you know your ice hockey. That's no ice hockey. Uh, this right here is the start of the game right there. And then right here, this is when, oh, what is it? Canada, this is Canada, let's just see here, I can't recall. Canada wins right there. And then we have this brief little scurry to the bathroom, which I love. <laughs> and then the medal ceremony right there. <laughs> and you guys nailed it up there, end of the first, second, and third periods. Very nicely done. This is a perplexing moment. So I have found perplexity. I'm in a really dangerous spot right now, though, because I can easily forget about this. I mean, you guys know the experience. You thought in here you've forgotten more good ideas than you've ever used in a classroom, right? Like, you know that feeling where it's like, oh my goodness, what was that one graph I saw a year ago? It had to do with hockey and going to the bathroom or something? And it's gone. It's just gone. I'll never get it back. I might Google it up again. But what I need now is my second favorite tool, which is a, a, a social bookmarking tool. There's lots out there. I don't care which one you use. The point is not the tool. The point is that it ha helps you capture perplexity. So I use this tool called, um, let me see here. Uh, I've got a toss that tosses out there. There's also places out there that, that catalog grammar mistakes for you. If you're into that, if you're not on the, the mathematics side, the, the language arts side, these people go out and they capture grammar errors for you. That's amazing. Throw that in your RSS reader, and then give it to your students to critique. 
Like, what's the error here? Is there one? Apostrophe. This right here. Apostrophe again. Uh, there's a site called Apostrophe Abuse. It's just great. It's a uh, quotation abuse also right here. Like, right here. It's a... Uh, what is that? What does this mean? <laughs> You're a parent. Like, do you take your child to this? Are you worried about this? Like, what does free mean? Like, not free? Or who's this Santa character? <laughs> I don't know about this. So, the point being, you have these things, but capturing them is tricky. So, go here and use this tool called Delicious or Digo or Evernote or any of those. It doesn't matter. The point is not the tool, the point is the pedagogy, the, the capturing of perplexity. This right here, delicious, it lets me go there, and I, I click it, and it fills in up on top there, the title, fills in the URL, that's all set. My only job here is to try to predict what future Dan will remember about this right here. So for instance, I'm typing in tags, I'm typing in infographics, that's what it is. I'll type in hockey, would be an obvious tag and choose here. Type in statistics, the class I'll use it in. Perplexity, if I type that, it lets me click on it later and then see everything I've ever tagged with perplexity. Uh, I can use my school's name, my school's name here, and then we can spread the load of finding perplexing things across the entire faculty. I'll have access to yours, you, you to mine, and spread that work around. Um, I think potty is an obvious choice too. <laughs> I enter in a brief little description here, just something to kind of let me know what it is. I click on save right there, and now I throw myself a little party. I'm happy now. The thing is captured, not just found, but captured. And I never lose stuff now. I never lose that stuff. These are the two tools I use most often. I can walk away here, and I just encourage you, get an RSS reader, get a bookmarker for the stuff you find on your RSS reader. Uh, and how it works, this is my delicious page right here. And the way it is, is I remember, oh, there's this amazing video I saw a long time ago. I know it had to do with rates. What was it? It had to do with rates, so I click on the rates tag. And it had to do with uh, football. Ours, not yours, sorry. Uh, and so I go up, and there it is. There's only six items that have rates and footballs as a tag. The thing just pops up. What once would have been forgotten in another decade is now with me forever. How about rich and the four? So here we go again. Rich, miles per hour, with strides. That's going to be the first thing you see. Let's check it out. <laughs> what are we topping out? 16.0. All right, here we have Rich versus Julio Jones. Which can stay in the picture. Right? Okay, here comes Julio. <laughs> okay, now versus Julio, half speed. No, not half speed. It's great, it's great, this is great. So I've got this captured, but what's the problem with using YouTube videos in the classroom? There's many. Related videos. The related videos. No control over that. No control to what it could be anything. What else? What? Yeah, yeah, the advertisements give no control over those. They pop up. What else? You want one, one piece of that right there, the entire thing. And it's true, I hadn't cropped this one down right there. Do you have trouble with YouTube being blocked in your schools at all? Yeah. Like in the States, like it's not a guarantee that it'll have access or good bandwidth to use it. You have to load it up in advance. The comments uh, below are, you know, illiterate at best. <laughs> you know? So for all these reasons, I want to capture that clip and I want to get it on my laptop where I can, I can keep it there for all time. So the tool I use and I preface to say, the tool doesn't matter. The point is capturing the perplexity. I use KeepVid. There's, uh, there's tons of tools just like this, but all you do is you just paste that link in right there, and out comes these download links. Click it and save it. It's on your computer. So well, there it is. But again, the point isn't KeepVid. The point is I need tools that help me capture perplexing things. One of the most valuable tools, honestly, it sounds so boring. One of the most valuable tools I use is a list. Just a list, one that I have with me everywhere, every computer, online, on my phone, in Google Docs. All this list is, is a place where I write down perplexing ideas as they come to me. If 
on a plane or driving somewhere or walking around. I just write it down in this list. And the funny thing is, is it seems to guarantee that more perplexing ideas come to me. If I use my head not as a place to like store ideas, but for creating ideas, uh, I get more and more ideas. So create a list however you want to. Um, this list that I have, I mean, it just goes on and on and on for days. I may never return to these ideas. The point is writing the ideas down. I use a tool like, uh, like, like voice memos on Google Voice or whatever, so that I'm, I'm walking around somewhere, I have no access to a pen or paper, I can still leave myself a note on my phone. Like, I'm in an insomnia coffee or whatever, and I notice that the size of the cups goes up from 8 to 12 to 16, all regular. But the prices, the prices, do not go up regular. So I'm thinking, what's the deal with that? What's the best coffee to buy here? So I pull up my phone in line, I dial myself and say, uh, linear price at insomnia coffee company. Hang up. And then what comes to me in my email is this right here. I give myself this little note right here. Nuts. The point is, I never forget anything. I'm trying to turn this right here into like a satellite receiver for every perplexing thing that comes along. You know what this is like. You have that, that, that insight, that idea for what will just light your student's world up. You don't want to forget it, and you want more of those. This is the point of all this here. Like, uh, I, I, I'm just so thrilled to teach in the year 2013 when my, the, the same device that I used to call Nana like, can take photographs, video? That's unbelievable to me. My wife has experienced this many times where she's asleep on a long car ride across country, and I just slam the brakes on and spin a U-turn around because I saw something perplexing out the window. <laughs> like this right here. And she's a little bit groggy and irritated, but so sweet about it. And, you know, what is this, she says? What are we doing here? I'll ask you, like, what is this right here? Do you know what that is? Why I can't they grab a photo of that? Do you know what that is right there? Someone's got to guess. Some, some kind of weather equipment? No, great guess though. What else? UFO. UFO. You got stuck in a telephone. No? It's warmer though, honestly. Not a lightning rod. Stick with the UFO. What? Modern art. Close enough. Anything else? This right here is, is Neptune. This is Neptune. <laughs> Obviously it's Neptune. <laughs> Don't you know Neptune when you see it on a pole? <laughs> yeah, so this right here is so great. I, ha I can't help but wonder. What's the question I'm wondering? What's the question that you're wondering when you see this here? Why is it there? Why? Why is it there? Who would do that? Where's the, the question I want to know is, where's the rest of them? How big are they? You know? Like, is the sun, you know, a good size now? Is it still unmanageable? Where is it? How far away is Earth? How big is it? That's a mathematical question. So just by taking this, I've captured perplexity. We're going to do some math. Now, um, I've, I've spent a lot of time talking about capturing perplexity. And that's because it's the hardest thing for me, honestly. Nothing's harder. Uh, the longer I've been out of my, my undergraduate degree in college, where I was taking elective courses in Italian cinema, or astronomy, or whatever random thing, the farther I've been from that, the harder it is for me to think like a normal human being. Like, I've done math, math teaching for years now. I've been a math teacher. And it's so hard for me not to think about the world as a math teacher does. And the same goes for all of you in your disciplines. I have no doubt. Math is not special in that regard. It's hard to get ourselves out of the thing that we've been doing every day, eight or nine, ten hours a day, and think like human beings think, how kids think, how kids are curious. But these are the most important tools for me, capturing perplexity. And I know, I know I'm doing it right, but I've got a good workflow going when I can't turn off the satellite dish. When I can't shut my mind down, when I'm trying to sleep and I'm thinking about that thing I saw earlier, or, this is personal, when I'm in the bathroom, the men's room, and I notice on top of, um, of the urinal that we have this math problem here, saves 88% more water than a one gallon urinal. It's right there, and I'm thinking to myself, just don't, just don't. <laughs> This is the discipline.
discipline, and I've got to capture perplexity wherever I see it. And I don't really know how urinal etiquette here is in Ireland, but um, in the United States, you've got to be really careful pulling out a camera. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. No one get hurt on my account, okay? That right there is capturing perplexity. Okay, it's the hardest thing, took the longest to talk about. Sharing perplexity is relatively easy. I mean, for this, I need to have a few core ingredients. I gotta have a laptop to store my perplexing stuff on it. Wherever I go, I got this. I need a projector so I can display stuff. I need to have a, a speaker for audio perplexity. A document camera lets me share a particular kind of perplexity that none of the other ones can share as fast. What kind of perplexing thing can I share with that? Text. Text? I can type text. I can type text pretty fast. 3D items, definitely. Also, student work. Things that students have produced on text. I can just slide that under and have a conversation about that. This is, this is my all-star team here, my core ingredients. For software, I use uh, Keynotes or PowerPoint. I would disagree with our esteemed presenter from earlier. PowerPoint can be awful, but here, like you notice, I, I'm not using this for, for notes or to store my bullet points or the stuff I should have memorized. I use this to sequence up perplexing things so we can have a conversation about it if you were my students. That's how I use it for organization of visuals. I mean, I use Adobe Photoshop for photo work, Adobe After Effects for complicated video work. Those are a little bit more deep, deep cut tools. I won't have tutorials on those, but if you want to talk about that sometime, email me, I'll give some pointers. I found those very valuable, but very tricky to learn. Uh, Final Cut Pro for basic editing. But sharing perplexity is not just technology, it's also pedagogy, as we've seen. Like, this is how I found that graph. I found it on this website. I found it like this right here. But that's not how I showed it to you. What was the difference? Put away all this stuff. Because this right here, this is trying to engage you. The guy who wrote the blog post wanted to engage a readership. That's his goal. That's great. It's a good goal. It's the right goal for him. Our goal as teachers should not be engagement so much as perplexity, so I get rid of this stuff with just a white rectangle of PowerPoint, and then I blend that thing in, done. Um, same goes here, I might cross out um, that 88% and ask them, what should this be if the advertising is true? Then it's a task. Or this video here, what's the question that you were wondering at the end of this? What would be a question I could ask? I could ask you, what is this speed in kilometers per hour? That would be one kind of question. I think there's better ones out there, though. At the end right here, they gave, uh, they gave this guy a, 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 a... put him in half speed and gave him a head start. Did you notice this? So right here, the question I might ask students is, who will win? That's a question that math can help you answer. So it's all about the question and the perplexity and the pedagogy. I also share, um, I share my perplexing stuff, not just with students, but with teachers. Like this right here, a commercial for a toy in the States called Orbeez. What it is, is you, you dunk these little pellets in water, and out comes the, these enormous pellets. And kids love them, I think. And Orbeez website makes this kind of outlandish claim here, that it grows to be a hundred times the size. Really? <laughs> really, Orbeez? So I go out, I'm a really strange individual, and I buy myself some Orbeez with the kids, you know, they're freaking out over it. I buy it, and then, um, I, I, does that look to you like a hundred times? <laughs> Who says more than a hundred times bigger there, that one? Anybody? Do you? Who says less than a hundred times bigger? My instinct is to say less than 100 times bigger. The fact is, the volume is tricky to perceive. It is more than 100 times bigger, bizarrely. My students do that mathematics. It's a great moment for us. I go onto my blog, and we can do a whole discussion about how blogging as professional development works. I post this thing in my blog here, so other people can download it. Bizarre stuff happens. I get invited to Ireland, for instance. But on this moment here, here, uh, the veteran teachers come by, and I haven't been at this long enough to, to you know, really feel confident. Veteran teachers come along, and they say, hey, nice lesson, but you should have tried this, this, and this. 
which stings for a second. And then I think to myself, veteran teachers have come by to offer me free advice. I can't afford to pass that up. Um, people come along and they download my lesson materials and they use them, which makes my effort multiply. Blogging is so great for so many reasons, including the fact that Sharon Cohen stopped by. Who's Sharon Cohen? Sharon Cohen comments, she's the brand manager of Orbeez. <laughs> like, oh, no. I see no three ways, nothing good. <laughs> but no, she comes along and she's offering me, yeah, she's offering me Orbeez internal data set of different kinds of water they use for testing to get different sizes of Orbeez. So now we have a data analysis unit. We bring the science teacher in to explain what ionic content means. Um, it's great. So much great stuff happens when you share your perplexity with the world on Twitter or your blog or whatever else. Uh, my advisor at Stanford says that classrooms are somewhat unforgiving places to learn and teach. Like you, you can't be so old you don't remember that, right? Like how unforgiving it is to learn and teach in a classroom. Doctors, they have cadavers. They have, they have dead people. <laughs> you know? Teachers do not have cadavers. And so if I can learn how to teach online by sending stuff to people on the internet, great, I'll take it. That's sharing perplexity. Resolving perplexity is, is the easiest to talk about. It's going to feel a bit like a cheat, like I'm cheating you after those tools before. But check this out. Go with this for me for a second here. If you are curious what those valleys and peaks mean, I've captured that, I've shared it with you, you're curious, how do we resolve your perplexity? We resolve it with interpreting key features of graphs and tables. This is the technology. It does not have a web address, but it is technology, the tool that we use to answer your question. If you're curious who's gonna win that foot race, we're talking about analyzing and solving simultaneous linear equations. If you're curious how many dollar bills are on that wall there, we're talking about what, surface area? I don't know, like, what are, the, what are the technology that we have to offer students as math teachers, as English teachers, as the Irish teachers, as all kinds of teachers, what is your technology you can offer? Um, this right here, check this out, this is amazing to me. This is uh, for you science teachers. Anti-gravity machine. And look, it's not attracted. It's just weird stuff. Eddy currents. Eddy currents. I have no idea what eddy current is. If you are a science teacher, you've captured this, you shared it with me, I am well and truly perplexed. I want you to teach me what eddy current is and how I can use it for all kinds of evil aims. Like, I want to know how to wield that power. <laughs> this, this should be our goal as teachers to perplex students, share it with them, and then help them resolve it with our tools. This right here, um, like, I don't know what potassium chlorine is, but I want to know how, it, how it's used to do this right here. <laughs> how it turns a gummy bear into a firework. Like, I want you to teach me You've put me in a spot. This right here is perplexing. I've shared it with you. I've captured it and shared it with you. What tools can you offer me to unperplex myself and figure out what it means? Punctuation. What else? Spacing. Certainly. Hashtag. <laughs> Curious. Google. Google. Glasses. Glasses. You guys are at the end of the day and playing with me now at this point. <laughs> the point being is that if you teach English language arts, you can, I mean, you can just tell students today we're going to learn about punctuation and spelling or put students in a place to be perplexed and need to get themselves out of it and just see how, how helpful all these different technologies are. This has life and death implications. <laughs> this is life and death here, everybody. That right there is how we resolve perplexity in the classroom. And the biggest shift for me as a teacher, honestly, was back in the day, I would start with my objective, I would lecture through it, I would give examples, I would talk at students, and at the end of the day, if some students had finished quickly, the advanced students would get something 
perplexing to work on that justified the whole point of that objective there. And so much more fun and so much more effective was just to flip that around. That's my flip classroom right there. Is the start of what is perplexing and curious and questioning about your discipline and then use that to lead into an objective. It's the difference between me saying, today guys, we're gonna learn about X, Y, or Z, versus saying, today, we're gonna ask about some question, and then unbeknownst to you, my students, X, Y, or Z will help us <coughs> answer it later. It's been such a profound shift for me, one that many of you have discovered long ago, plus me sharing it. This is my EdTech manifesto. You've gotta find one for yourself. It's not the only good one, it's just mine, and you're free to borrow it. Uh, for now. But I never want to say, I never want to actually untie this knot right here. I never want to untie it. It can't be untied, really. You have to work with it. And that's what makes teaching so fun, so exhilarating, that we only have so much cash, so much patience, so many hours in a school year. This makes the decisions that we make matter. Every choice you make matters because of this knot right here. It's been a privilege uh, to talk with you about capturing, sharing, resolving complexity. Thank you so much.